Hello and welcome to the channel. A former Niger Delta militant leader, Asari Dokubo, ever since his visit to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the presidential villa, has been trending on the news. It's no hold barred take on the Nigeria military stealing the country's oil and subsequent slave commentary about the Igbos has clearly put him in the high of the storm. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you. Asari Dokubo Uncensored Shameful Soldiers Asari Dokubo, a former militant leader in the Niger Delta, has damning verdicts on the performance of the Nigerian military under successive service shifts. They have enough resources to fight, but instead of fighting, they are busy stealing. They are busy making the government to spend unnecessarily. Dokubo spoke after visiting President Bola Tinubu in Abuja recently. An excerpt of his interview read, What's your mission in State House? Dokubo, Mr. President has been a father figure to me. Our relationship spans over 30 years. I came here today to give words of encouragement to the President for the actions and policies so far made in his less than three weeks of governing a very difficult country like Nigeria. We discussed a wide range of issues, especially on security and oil theft in the Niger Delta. My brothers and I assure the President that there will be zero oil theft and vandalization in the Niger Delta. We are going to work with the NNPCL and the IOCs to make sure that oil theft is brought to zero. I also want to say that oil theft is encouraged by the military. The military is at the center of oil theft and we have to make this very, very clear to the Nigerian public. 99% of oil theft can be traced to the Nigerian military, the army and the navy especially. The army and the navy intimidate the civil defense who by status are supposed to guard these pipelines. They receive a lot of money from NNPC Hell and the high hoses and just across the corner you will see a meter not far from a household, an oil bunkery refinery or tapping directly from oil well. It is very pathetic now. What has happened in the Niger Delta in the past eight years was unprecedented in the history of oil production anywhere in the world. The vandals do not only attack the pipeline, they have migrated from the pipeline and gone directly to the oil well to take directly from it. They set up Afazad facilities called local refinery and artisan refinery. This is crime against humanity because the livelihood of the people is being totally destroyed. At every meter, you will see a naval houseboat or the army houseboat stationed. The main culprits are the army and the navy, and there are notorious naval commanders who are known to be kingpins of these bunkery activities. Even if they give one billion naira contract to everybody in the Niger Delta, because these military men are armed from the army and the navy, nothing will happen. The president has promised to take decisive action to make sure that this does not continue. It has to be brought to an end because it is very shameful. I volunteer to help, to assist, and to do the things that are necessary to put a stop to this evil that has been perpetrated against the people of the Niger Delta, the oil-bearing communities, and the whole of Nigerians. On security, I want to clearly say that there are full-scale wars going on in different parts of this country. In the southeast, the IPOB ESN is waging a full-scale war against the government of this country. Many local governments and communities are deserted, schools are closed, hospitals are closed. It is the same in Niger, in Zamfara, in Plateau, in Kaduna, in Yobe, in Bono. We are only talking about BH. BH is just the tip of the iceberg in the full-scale war going on. The blackmail of the Nigerian state by the Nigerian military is shameful. They said they do not have enough armament and people are listening to these false narratives. They are lying. They are liars. I repeat, they are liars because I am a participant. I am a participant in this war. I fight on the side of the government of Nigeria. Today, you are traveling to Kaduna on this road. It is not the army that made it possible for you to travel to Abuja or travel to Kaduna vice versa. It is my men employed by the government of Nigeria stationed in Niger. Today, go to Baga, you go to Shiroro, and go to Wase. We have lost so many men. 
We don't even have 1% of the armament deployed by the Nigerian military, and we have had resounding success. So this blackmail must end. They have enough resources to fight. Instead of fighting, they are busy stealing. They are busy making the government to spend unnecessarily. A question, where is Dogo who was terrorizing Ninja and Kaduna? Dokubo, he is nowhere because he has been served this dish that he was serving others. So let us support the government and don't listen to these false narratives because somebody must tell the truth. We don't have arms. An average person is carrying two magazines of AK-47 bullets. In their trucks, the Nigerian army would carry 2,030 cans. Two magazines of AK-47 is 25 rounds of ammunition. 700 or 750 make up a con. And there are 2,021 in their district. They will leave on slight attack. They will abandon these weapons for the bandits, the insurgents to take them. In actual fact, the insurgents are harvesting from the Nigerian military and police to further their insurgents. Question, most of these people, are they actually insurgents? The hawk criminal says the Kubo. You go to some camps, you will find 200 vehicles stolen from people who are the owners of these vehicles. They cut these vehicles into parts, they sell them, you go to some places, you will find out that human parts have been brought out, put in coolers and sold. It is human organ trafficking, which the governor of Anambra State, Soludo, has also attested to in one of his interviews. Before the president came, I knew that we had never had any person like him aspiring for this position. I am not flattering him now. I said it before the primaries. I said it during the course of the election. I said it after the election. So, all the forces of evil and darkness came together to fight to ensure that Ahmed Bola Tinubu did not become president of Nigeria because they are benefiting from the institution failure that is going on. Question, why is it that NDDC is not working? Dokubo, this is because there are people from here who go and collect all the money from the NDDC. All the money, the NDDC MD and the board members only want to survive. Let me just take my bread and water, let them not suck me, so they take all these things. At the amnesty program, it is the same thing. They just go and collect everything, and it is the people that are sitting there that suffer. How can somebody save 500 billion a month, saying that it has been used to lift people out of poverty? Do you know how many industries that will settle? Do you know how many agricultural settlements that will set up? Where did the money go to? How can somebody say we use $10 billion? almost 8 trillion to service the glutonous appetite of a few people at the expense of the masses. And the NLC and TUC will come and say they should give them palliatives. What is the percentage of members of NLC and TUC, vice versa, the total population of Nigeria? Why will we operate an appetite system of rewarding a few people at the expense of the generality of the people? Why will they have palliative cushioning the woman in Otugbene, the woman at Kola, who is fishing, or the woman somewhere at Agayi, who is farming. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.